let's talk about this. Calling a function in the same location, the same scope, the same location as it was defined. Let's walk through this code line by line, but note we're going to call outer the inside of which we're going to define increment counter and immediately call increment counter inside the same location. Okay. Let's walk through this code line by line, and it's going to leave us with an open question, an ambiguity, which I regrettably have given the answer to here. But we're going to pretend we don't see this, and we're going to feel that ambiguity and see what it tells us about how our scoping, how our JavaScript thinks about looking for the relevant data at the relevant moment. OK, what data is going to be available to us at a particular moment? And once we know that, we're going to have a very clear model for how we get this beautiful concept of closure. OK, line one, Skylar, what's happening? So let's start by declaring a function outer yep. with no parameters stored in the global memory. OK, next line, Skylar. So we're going to call out it. OK, perfect. With no arguments, and that opens up a new execution context. Very good. Thanks, Skylar. And we're going to add that to the call, stack. the call stack. There it is, the call to outer. Splendid. A word I never used before. But OK, into the execution context of outer we go. And Z, what is the first thing? that happens inside this execution <coughs> context. We declare the local variable counter and set it equal to zero. Perfect. Declare counter, set it equal to zero. OK, next line, region. We're declaring a function called increment counter in the local memory. And Perfect. Yep. That is excellent. Thank you, Mijun. Next line, Mijun. We are then calling increment counter okay. and invoking it. Calling increment counter. How do I know I'm calling it? Remind me, Mijun. Parentheses. Parentheses. Does it need an argument? No, it doesn't. The parens are my all-powerful thing. They create my execution context. All right, so I'm adding increment counter to the top of the call stack, the stack of my functions being called. I'm doing, I'm calling outer, I'm calling increment counter inside of outer. So increment counter gets added to the top of my call stack. All right. Into increment counter we go. What is the first line of code, Philip, that we encounter in increment counter? Counter plus plus. Counter plus plus. Counter plus plus. OK, so we're going to increment this counter. But we've not declared anything inside of local, but we are going to look there for this thing we're referring to, counter. So where do we look for counter first, Philip? We first look in the local uh, memory. The local memory, the local execution context. Do we find it? No. No, we do not. So where do we look next, Mijun? We'll look in the local memory for outer. Aha. Uh -huh. Where do we find counter? We do. We do, what do we do to it? We increment it by one. Beautiful. We did not find our counter in our increment counter's execution context local memory, so we stepped one layer out to outer. Everything right now, I, I am so confident, I am so confident that it's because I called increment counter inside of outer, because I ran it inside of outer, one layer down the call stack, that I went out to outer next. I'm so confident of that. I'm 100% confident of that. That's the reason. It's so obvious that one box is out of the other box. I'm 100% confident. The reason why. I have my counter available to me in increment counter. It's because I'm calling increment counter inside of outer. It's that going down the call stack. Everyone confident with me? We're all wrong. <laughs> so I try to include myself in that, but just, yeah. we're all wrong. We're all wrong together. Well, it says here where you define your function, where you define your functions, determines what variables your function has access to when you call the function. In other words, it's not that I called increment counter inside of outer. That means when I don't find counter in local, I can go one layer out to outer and find counter. It's not because, it's not because I called it there. It's because I defined increment counter inside of outer. It's because I defined it adjacent to counter. Well, for, for now, who cares? They're, they're calling and defining the same place anyway. 
So I can't even tell. I'm, you actually may still be right. You may still be right. <laughs> you may still be right. We'll see. Oh, or can anyone think of a way to somehow test this, to run increment counter in a way that would test my theory that it's where I call it that matters? Philip? We can return uh, the definition of increment counter out of outer. Oh, that's very, very sophisticated. Uh, JD? We can call it outside of outer. Aha! Uh -huh. We can call it more, yeah, absolutely, Philip, you're so small on, but you're right, uh, right, JD, to say, we can call increment counter out here. Then I know I defined it inside, but I'm calling it outside. So I can see what really matters. Is it where I define it? Increment counter or is it where I call it? So how do I end up running increment counter out here? I don't think I can do it. Have I got an idea? Yeah, what if, if I run increment counter out here, can I even run it like this, Mijin? Is this legitimate code? No. Yeah, I'm going to get some sort of error, aren't I? Increment counter is not a function. It's not available. Yeah, so Mijin, how could I get that inner increment counter function out from where it was defined and test my theory of it's where I call my function or is it where I define my function that determines what data ends up being available to me? You re could return that function out of outer. Fantastic. I can return that increment counter function out from where it was defined. We gave birth to it inside of here. We said, ah, let's return it out and use it outside, just as we did with our instruction generator, the multiply by two function. We, we defined inside and returned it out. Same thing, we could define increment counter and return it out, give it a new global label for that fun inner functionality, and then call it by that new global label in global execution context. Here it is. There is a way to run a function outside where it was defined, return the function's definition and assign it to a new global label for that functionality. Here we go, folks. This is, this is a call. This is our code. This is our code. So, line one, what are we doing? Z. We're declaring outer, the function outer, in the global variable. In the global variable environment, global memory, yep, both of those are legitimate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next line, Mijin. We're declaring a function, or I'm sorry, a variable, my new function. Uh -huh. And for now, it is yet to be defined, but um, it's going <laughs> but, to So be. JavaScript doesn't call it yet to be defined. It calls it <laughs> undefined. undefined. Yeah, good. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually a data type in JavaScript. <laughs> it's not just like, yeah, so, yeah, to be defined. Very, that is a more poetic version of undefined. All right, undefined, and we're going to now go do some work, right, Mijun, to figure out what to store there. We're creating a new local execution context because we are invoking the function outer. Excellent. Very nicely put by Mijun. Uh, the return value of this function called outer is going to end up being stored in this minute function label. Whatever the return value is, could be a number, could be an object, could be an array, could be a function, whatever we're going to find out. All right, so we're calling outer, meaning within the global, meaning it gets added on top of the call stack. Perfect. We create an execution context. We create an execution context that will run the code of outer for us. There it is. And in we go. And the first thing, there's no argument, so what is the first thing we do inside of our local memory? Lewis. We're defining a variable counter setting equal to zero. Excellent. Thank you, Lewis. Next thing we do, Skylar. We declare a function increment counter in that local memory. Excellent. Perfect. There it is. Now, do we invoke that function? No, we do not. No. What do we do instead, Philip? We return the value of increment counter. Right, the, the value, the function value. Yeah. Don't think it's sort of running increment counter or returning. It's returning the functionality, which, we, which is legitimately known as a function value. This is our label for our function value, but think of it as being the function definition is the value, right? It gets returned out. 
that whole function definition is going to be returned out, not executed, it's going to be returned out in one go. Think of it returning out basically function, and what's the body of that function, Philip? Counter plus plus. Yeah, exactly. That's the functionality we're returning out. That's the functionality we're returning out into what global variable, Philip? My new function. Into my new function, excellent. So my new function is now this functionality. It's now this functionality here. OK, excellent. So out has returned that function, formerly known as increment counter. Now it's known as my new function. And it was formerly known as increment counter, but not anymore. That was just its label inside of outer. What's happened to outer's execution context at this point, Mijan? It is white. It's white. Posh word for that. Popped off the call stack. And only the returned out function, formerly known as increment counter, is held on to in a new global variable, my new function. Or is it? It is. No, it's not that. Who cares? We'll see. We'll see. What's our next line of code? Because now we can run our increment counter function in the global context through its new label, my new function. There it is. So we hit the all important line, my new function being run. The all important line. All right, let's get a new pen. Is it the all important line, my new function being run? And what do we do, Lewis? Uh, we're creating a new execution context. Excellent. That's where we begin, as always. Yeah. In we go. And it has a local memory. And our thread has, our thread, by the way, is woven in here, come back out, and now it's gone in here. OK, in we go. Execution context, what's the first thing it says to do inside of my new function, the functionality formerly known as increment counter? What's the first thing it says to do? Increase counter value. Perfect. Counter plus plus. Now, now we get our question. Where? Oh, we're calling my new function, so what do we do with the call stack, Philip? Uh, we push the call to my new function to the call stack. Excellent. We push the call to my new function to the call stack. Very well put. It's top of our call stack. This is where we are right now. Is Outer's execution context still open? No, 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 no. This is so, oh, I forgot to do my, forgot to indicate that. This is so done. <laughs> that sound more colloquial than intended. It's done, gone. We're in the call to my new function. Bottom line of our code here. Mijan, where do I look for counter it turns out it's not in um, outer because that's not. Well, wait, wait, we're not going to outer. Oh, outer's yeah, outer's so on gone. First, but where do I look first? Um, first in the local. In the right, local. I look always top of my call stack first. And do I find it, Mijun? No. No, I don't. So now, where would all of my intuition, all my everything tells me, where do I look next? Well, your intuition would probably tell you to look down the call stack. Down the call stack. Um, into global, right. because I'm calling my new function in global. Where else would I look? Where else would I look? I, I couldn't think where else I would look. Like then it's very obvious that the next place to look is global. Do I have it there? Okay. Is there a counter? Can I just say, what a badly designed language that allows you to find a function and then run it, and then the, the values aren't there. So what would we get here? What, what would our intuition tell us that we get here, Skylar? Nothing. Yeah, some sort of error, perhaps. Yeah. Some sort of error. You know, <clears throat> I did not find your counter. I'm sorry. 